Alex, thank you so much for meeting me here today. Could you tell me about this gem of a museum here in Roner Park? I'd be delighted to. This uh -huh. is the Fortuna Depot Museum, which has been open since July of 1976. It was opened as the City of Fortuna's official bicentennial celebration for the United States Bicentennial. The building is the train station for Fortuna. It was actually moved over here in 1974 when the railroad company planned on tearing the building down and a bunch of Fortuna citizens got upset about that and convinced the city council to buy the building, move it over here to the park, restore it, and turn it into a local history museum. So what kind of exhibits do you have in here? It's local history with a, a real sort of feel of being a kind of family attic for the community. That's something that uh, we always enjoy seeing is when people come in and show their own kids or their grandkids things that they or their parents or their grandparents donated here and uh, pass along some of the family lore about the items. So it has a really sort of close personal spot in a lot of people's hearts in the community of Fortuna. Oh, that is wonderful. You know, and what a great setting, Roner Park. This is a beautiful park. It's wonderful. It's a great yeah. resource for the community. And it's been here ever since 1907 when mm -hmm. Mary Roner, uh, the widow of Henry Roner, the founder of Ronerville, uh, was, she was uh, wanting to memorialize her husband and donated the land to the city of Fortuna to create a city park. So that's why it bears the name Roner Park in their honor. Wow, I even noticed, I didn't know this, there's hiking trails through a redwood forest here. It's fantastic. It's a mature second growth redwood forest, which apparently is very rare. Usually you'll either see old growth forests that have never been logged at all, or you'll see areas that have been logged over and over again. Mm -hmm. But this forest here was last logged in the 1890s. So the trees that you see now are mature. They've all been growing since the 1890s. And apparently it's a really rare phenomenon. And we have lots of wonderful wildflowers and hiking trails with a, a map posted at the entrance to the trails so that people can uh, figure out where they're going to go and how long it's going to take. So it is also another wonderful resource. Wow, well, I'm so glad to be here. Can we go see the Jack London exhibits now? Yes, let's do it. All right, let's go. Ha! Looks like we're setting up right in front of the Jack London exhibit here. Yes, there is Jack himself <laughs> outside in front of the Star Hotel. So, okay, let me start with why did Jack go on this expedition? Well, it was a contract that he had with Sunset Magazine. I think he'd proposed to them uh, the project of he and his wife and uh, his valet, Nakata, would go on a three-month tour of the North Coast, uh, him driving uh, four horses and a wagon and, uh, you know, doing all sorts of outdoorsy, adventurous stuff. And he would write a, a report or a, a magazine article detailing all the interesting things that they'd done along the way and uh, the uh, sights that they'd seen and the adventures that they'd had. Where was he living before he took this adventurous trip? He was down in Sonoma County. Uh, uh -huh. They were just actually completing work on their big uh, house that they'd uh, been working on for several years at their ranch in Sonoma County, Glen Ellen. And uh, so this was kind of their last uh, big uh, adventure before settling into their new house. Okay, the other question I had, I read that Cars were available at the time, yet he chose to take a horse and carriage. Why in the earth did he do that? He did it to uh, kind of to test himself, to expand, uh, you know, seeing what he could do because he had a lot of background as a sailor. He uh -huh. and uh, Charmin and uh, a crew of, I think, seven people or so had uh, done uh, kind of an around the world uh, cruise, uh, um, piloting themselves in uh, their own yacht. And uh, he had a lot of sailing experience, both as a, um, you know, a famous uh, celebrity uh, who would uh, go on these uh, cruises and uh, sell his stories uh, based on that. But before that, before he became famous he actually was a, a you know a professional just you know guy working on ships uh, so he had this sailing background but he always liked to test himself and he wanted to see if he could do this if he could uh, kind of move beyond his sailing background and actually deal with driving four horses and getting uh, the horses to work well with him and uh, you know it was basically just trying to to test himself and also do something that uh, the magazine uh, readers would find interesting. Yeah because you sent me some accounts of it and I read a lot about he was not familiar with working a four horse team. Was yeah it? apparently he had to really do a lot of work uh, to uh, get used to this and be able to handle it so that they had a kind of a trial run that they uh, took maybe just a week or two uh, away from their home uh, getting him used to how to deal with 
with the horses. Do you know about when he arrived in Humboldt? Was it summer? Or? Yeah, it was July. Um, they started on their trip, uh, their uh, four horse team uh, expedition in early June. And uh, they got to Humboldt uh, probably about uh, July 7th or thereabouts in 1911. And the whole trip actually took them up until early September. I think they got back home uh, on September 6th. Okay. Um, so they stayed in Fortuna one, early on in the trip, right? Well, kind of uh, maybe a month into the trip or so, but yes, they stayed in Fortuna. And one thing that uh, Charmian, his wife, when she was writing about this, she made it clear that he was not interested in camping, even though he was an outdoors man and into hunting and fishing and all of that. He said that he'd done enough roughing it in his early years that he wasn't interested in that anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Star Hotel was their uh, uh, location of choice in Fortuna, because he didn't want to be out there in a tent. Uh, he wanted mm -hmm. to have uh, the comforts of home uh, when they stopped off for the night, and the Star Hotel was the luxury hotel of Fortuna at the time. Well, now, when, when uh, Jack London and his wife and Nakata rolled into Fortuna, was he kind of a celebrity then? He was. He was. His, uh, his big breakthrough uh, publication was in 1903 with The Call of the Wild, uh -huh. which a bunch of us, of course, probably had to read in middle school. I love Call of the Wild. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. a great book. And White Fang and mm -hmm. Sea Wolf, some of my favorite books. And I read them when I was a, a little boy. It's yeah. one of my first books yeah. I read. Yeah. So yeah, that was 1903. So uh -huh. that's uh, you know eight years or so before he arrives here in Fortuna. Mm -hmm. He published a lot of other books and short stories since then. And and uh, in fact, just in June of 1911, so just right at the time that he was starting this trip, uh, his book, The Cruise of the Snark, had been published, which was about uh, the uh, yachting trip that uh, he and his wife had taken. And Nakata, uh, the valet, Yoshimatsu Nakata, I believe is his name, mm -hmm. he was a character in The Cruise of the Snark because uh, this was the nonfiction treatment of that adventure. And that was when Nakata had joined their staff. He became their cabin boy uh, on mm -hmm. the snark. And since this book had just come out at the time that the visit uh, was uh, going on, the time that they arrived in Fortuna, both Jack London and his wife Charmian London and Yoshimatsu Nakata were all famous, not only with Jack being a famous author, but with them being people, characters in this book that uh, people would have just read, a uh, book that was basically hot off the presses. <laughs> wow. So he stayed in the Star Hotel the, the, all night, and then he got up the next morning and he left. Fortuna. Yep, drove out of town. And mm. uh, one thing that you'll see from this uh, expedition that they took that summer is that almost every town that they stayed in, there were people taking pictures of them posing outside wherever they had stayed. So mm. you'll see multiple photos of Jack and Charmian and Nakata in their uh, wagon with the four horse team in front of this hotel or that hotel <laughs> or the house that they'd stayed in with friends there. So the Star Hotel, boy, that sad story when that burned down in 2015, wasn't yeah. it? I remember that. Yeah, it was very sad. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was one of these buildings that had just a really uh, important spot in the whole memory of the community. Mm -hmm. Nobody in Fortuna today could ever remember a time when the Star Hotel building was not there. It was uh, built in 1876. Mm -hmm. And at the time that it was destroyed, it was the oldest surviving commercial building in all of Fortuna. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you think of 1876, that's the centennial of the United States. That's uh, the year that uh, Custer was defeated at the Little Bighorn. Uh, so mm -hmm. you think of the fact that that building had been here in Fortuna ever since that time. There may have been one or two competing hotels at the time, but mm -hmm. certainly the star was the uh, the high profile one, the one where uh, celebrity guests did stay and also uh, salespeople coming in from out of town, uh, the Traveler's Hotel. So yeah, it was basically uh, the, the place to stay in Fortuna. Well, Alex, thank you so much. It's, I'm going to spend some time looking around here in the Wonderful. museum. And then I'm going to go down to where the Star Hotel once stood just to see what it looks like down Right, there. yeah. Okay, well, thanks again. I sure enjoyed it. Oh, it's been wonderful having you. All right. Mm -hmm.